about two years ago, together with other business students from the University of the Philippines, we put up outliers, which at the time we felt like we were random errors in the eyes of our colleagues who wanted a more traditional business track. So we set out to being in service of those who serve. So we work with nonprofit organizations and we, we complement their work with business skills, the little business experience that we have because we felt like our work is best um, that development is, is happen, the development happens best when we work with them rather than when we put up our own social enterprises because we felt like they had the more experience in the social and con the various contexts that they work in. So we work with education programs in arts, we work with organizations who work in people with disabilities, existing social enterprises. And one of the most amazing nonprofit organizations we work with is called Visayan Forum Foundation. So about 10 million people or 10% of the Philippine population live as migrant workers abroad. And a lot of times they are thrown into situations that are inhumane and slave-like. And Visayan Forum in its 20 years has so far saved more than, than 70,000 trafficking survivors and, do, and they are doing amazing work. So they are put into the center of hope where they are healed and they are taken care of, they are given, they are given healing services, psychological interventions. But we felt like there's a gap in the service that, that they receive because while they are there, where they stay about an average of six months, they feel guilty that while they are safe, their, their families back home aren't able to, to, to live properly because the reason why they left in the, in the first place is because they wanted to provide for them. So we put up Ventures for Freedom, which is a livelihood program for them that while they are there, they are able to, to work part-time as they are able to, to receive those services. But a couple of months back when I met Gavin and other interesting education people, I started to think about what, how can we inspire other young people to work in development? Because they say, right, our generation, Generation Y, is supposed to have this insatiable need to, to serve their communities in, and to, to save the world, quote unquote. And fortunately enough, about a couple of months ago, I met Mr. Chris Morris of the Asian Development Bank, which just last year, for instance, they gave $20 billion of development fund for developing countries in Asia and the Pacific. But most of the time, the meetings go like this. So it's old people discussing um, 10, 20 years of, of work that, most, that our generation will be the one to, to benefit from. And I feel like we should be more involved in this process, like what Ivica said and what we have worked on before with um, Gavin. So for the first time, last May, we piloted in the Asian Development Bank annual meeting, which gathered 5,000 5,000 policymakers, business leaders, and nonprofit leaders. There were 50 young people. So we brought in Elmo we, from Sesame Street. We had a youth panel discussion. So that was 1% of the, the population in that conference. But Asia Pacific has, the 15% of the population of Asia is considered young. And that 60% of the youth population is in Asia. So there's much more work to be done. But hopefully we were able to put forth the voice of youth because I believe that if the goal of education is to, pe to prepare our generation for, um, for a future that is uncertain, that would have a lot of development challenges, the best way to do it is to involve us now, to allow us to contribute and to recognize that we can do something. So that's my talk. Thank you very much.